Welcome, Red People. On tonight, my name is Tyler. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to make a scalable chain link, as you can see here. And then you can edit around all that. Okay, so first up, uh, the starting uh, geo for this is literally just you can grab a torus. Uh, have it be relatively low poly, and then we'll just kind of grab, oops, go to the top view here. Just kind of delete that, make extrude this out, extrude this out a little bit, and then you would just mirror this over, and then you have your chain link start. Just going to delete that, and then from that, we go into the array here. Let me just turn this off really quick. As you can see, it's just a singular. So set up the array, set this to fit length. This function will come in later. And then the factors, however, which way you want it. And then the object offset. And from that, you just can make an empty and then have this um, rotate to your liking for the chain difference. And then you need a curve for the curve function so that the bones work correctly. So now going into the curve. Also with this empty, um, I don't believe you need to scale. Okay, yes. So uh, also for the empty, make sure you have a copy scale object constraint. And this bone is, uh, in the case of a, a large rig, would be a global transform bone. So make sure that is attached so that scales correctly. Lastly, with the geo, make sure you have an object constraint copy scale of this first bone here, or else it will not scale correctly, as you can see here. And then going into the curve here, uh, creating Bezier curve is really easy. You just uh, go to curve, Bezier, and then what I like to do is just rotate it negative 90. And then I'm going to grab both points. We're going to hit S, Y and then zero for scaling on the y-axis and zero to just make sure it's all straight. And by default, this curve is only gonna have two points. To make more points, you go to segments, hit subdivide, and do this as many times as you want for how many points you need. So I'm going to exit out of that. So on this curve here, I have three points, one for the middle, one for the start, and then one for the end here. Uh, we have these hooks and these hooks will attach to the bones so that we can use the bones intuitively rather than having to go into edit mode uh, for every time we want to move the curve. So all you need to do is have a hook and also to create the bones, really simple, I'll just hit, uh, what I'm doing for this is shift A and then we go into armature and this creates a bone to where you can make a set of bones. So for this, I just have uh, three bones set up here, as you can see. So I'm gonna go back to the curve and I'm going to select one of the points here and then I have the bone names on for this. So in this case, all you need to do for the hook is just make sure you have the armature selected, select the correct bone and then you just hit assign. And if you make a mistake, just put the strength all the way to zero, hit assign to unassign it. So. Now, the last step is just the bone setup. So for each of these bones, we have some childs here. So for these, uh, I am not using a normal relation parent. I'm using a bone constraint. Uh, it's just the way that I have it set up. I'm sure it can work another way, but for this case, this is what we're using. So we have the starting bone here. The starting bone is attached to our global transform bone. And then going down, uh, the middle bone is attached to the starting bone. And then also the end bone is attached to the starting bone. Now I believe you can have it to where it's hierarchical. So uh, this bone would attach to this one and then this bone would attach to that one. Uh, I believe that's how I have it set up in my Megatron rig. I could be wrong though. So for the case of this, um, tutorial, I'm just going to have it set up like this. So as you can see, everything's moving good. As you can see there, and it's just a very simple child of, I do all of 
the scale, rotation, all that stuff. As you can see. Okay, so now going to the base here, make sure everything's good. Okay, so the last step for this obviously is controlling the chain length. Now what I will be doing is adding a driver. So all you need to do is go to the length here. I'm just going to right click, I'm going to hit add driver. And for this case, we'll actually, oops, we'll go edit driver, we'll go object, we're going to type in our armature. And then we'll type in our bone, which is bone four for this case. And we, let's see, we go back into our bone here. I'm thinking we can do this on, oops, we can have the chain be affected by the location Y, as you can see here. So go back to the chain, right click edit driver. We'll go to Y location and we'll do a local space as if you do world space, it can kind of freak out sometimes. And then for this, um, you can either have this set to zero if you like the changes to start at zero by default, or you can just have a set length. Um, for this case, we'll just do 18. Oops. And make sure you add a addition symbol or multiplication, division, so on and so forth. So now our chain, as you can see here, has a controller that subtracts and and one last thing, uh, when you are setting the scale, you can scoot these bones down just so that they are not um, just sitting here at the beginning and so you can edit all of these uh, movements and kind of move it around. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next video.